Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. Uh, before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Tommy Doyle's Crushed Pumpkin Ale. <laughs> if you want the recipe, get it above our heads here. All right. Today we're talking about 1978's The Comeback. It is directed by Pete Walker. He <laughs> began his career in uh, a lot of kind of sexploitation movies and such. Kind of very similar to the director who did The Cat in the Canary, which we covered right. last year. Um, he got his start in softcore porn too. It is starring Jack Jones, a real-life singer-songwriter, which is what he plays in this movie. Along with him, his co-star is Pamela Stevenson. Just to name some stuff, she did a season of uh, SNL back in the 80s. She was in some Columbo. <laughs> Cladumbo, as my dad calls it. <laughs> And she also plays the uh, the ditzy blonde in Superman 3, which is the best Superman movie of them all. <laughs> you know it, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the movie starts off, shows this woman kind of coming into this warehouse sort of in super dangerous elevator you yeah. can stick your fingers through and get them chopped <laughs> off. She makes her way to this apartment. You kind of get the sense that there's somebody in the apartment there with her. You see this sort of quivering hand kind of going down to pick this sickle up. This weird figure just pops up making these weird noises. <laughs> And she's wearing this weird, like, old yeah. hag mask and just starts hacking at her. Cuts her hand off and it goes flying. She ends up dying, like, on the stairs. Killer opening for a movie. Yeah, it's, it's wicked. Yeah. It, it's uh, very Argento-ish. Yeah. They show a plane arriving and it's Nick who arrives in London. A singer-songwriter that has come back from the States to make a comeback in his career. The woman who got killed in the apartment is actually his ex-wife. His manager, Webster is his name, he's managed to set up this manor house in the countryside for him to do all his recording and singing, to stay there basically. And it's just two people that are kind of overseeing the grounds and the house and everything. Mr. and Mrs. B. And when he gets there, Mrs. B answers the door and she's super, like, Mrs. Doubtfire. Starts recording, starts doing some stuff. He's kind of lame yeah, anyways. Yeah, he's so lame. Like the, uh... His music is lame. I was just gonna say, the, the songs are like something you just hear in an elevator All or something. All this fucking music. <laughs> yeah. Easy listening. Oh, it's that lounge piano yeah. shit, right? Yeah. Starts kind of a little bit of a love interest with uh, Webster's secretary. While he's trying to sleep, he starts to have all these strange dreams. But we're not sure if they're dreams or not. He sees uh, visions of his wife. He doesn't know that his ex-wife is dead yet. The body hasn't been found. Yeah. And they keep cutting every once in a while to the body. Every time they cut to it, it's more decomposed, which is neat. You don't know if she's haunting him or, or what's going on there. Throughout this whole time, he's got this friend, Harry, keeps trying to convince Nick to go back to the apartment to get his things before Gale cleans him out. <laughs> yeah. So Harry decides to go by himself and he takes Linda with him. And he's being a super creep in the elevator. Like, he's saying some shit that, like, yeah. you get a man punched in the face nowadays. Should have yeah. then in the yeah. elevator, <laughs> yeah. too, you know. They're about to go into the apartment and you could see these flies <laughs> that are getting out of the keyhole for, I guess, because the, there's a body decomposing in there. Oh, it's the wrong key anyways. Yeah. That oh yeah, it's the wrong too. key. Yeah. Nick and Linda want to go visit his manager at night to discuss something. <laughs> they pull up at the mansion and this scene has no relevance in the rest of the movie. It has nothing to do with any plot points or anything. It shows the manager and he's some <laughs> Cross dresser, he's like <laughs> yeah. got the makeup on, he's in the mirror. What does that have to do with anything? Harry finally decides to go to the apartment. He is met by the same fate as Gale. He's attacked by the same person. Nick is still having trouble sleeping and everything, and he gets up one night and he's wandering around the house and he goes down to the basement and he sees this box. He opens it up and he sees his ex-wife Gail's decomposed head in this box <laughs> goes catatonic and faints yeah and it ends up in the hospital in this like catatonic state realizes when he wakes up that not only is his friend Harry missing Linda his new love interest is also apparently decided just to go away and uh, that's where we're going to leave the plot point because now basically Nick has to find out what's happened to his 
two friends and what is happening to his life. Yeah. Is he imagining this? Is he going insane? Is someone playing tricks on him? And who's behind the raggedy old mask? So watch to find out. Yep. So why are we talking about this movie? It's totally, definitely a forgotten movie. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You never really ever hear it mentioned. I don't even know how we came across it. A great, great f opening scene. First kill opening scene. The fact that she's not found yeah. is original. I don't know of any of other movie, any other horror movie where the body yeah. isn't found. Everybody keeps pushing each character to this apartment too, yeah. right? The misdirection in this movie is really good. Yeah, yeah, they do a fantastic job of it. Mr. and Mrs. B are really <laughs> good at being the really the creepy housekeepers. There is a scene too with that Mrs. B looks like she's wearing chin putty <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. Reminds me of, like, Bart in The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that chin putty all comes off and the dog eats it. <laughs> the killer's mask and outfit is its so creepy and cool in this. I love it. I, yeah. In fact, I wish they would have showed it a bit more. Yeah, but, uh, you know, the fact that they don't is also great, too, yeah. right? They don't overdo it. Yeah. The weapon that the killer uses in the apartment... Sickle, yeah. Ah, oh, come on. The motive, when you find out the motive behind the killings, is very original and cool and a neat idea, I found. Yeah. And it's, it's actually cool commentary mm -hmm. on the influence that pop music has yeah. on people. The movie's very tragic on top of it. And uh, you learn of a lot of the tragic stuff at the end, which we're not going to say, but it is quite a tragic movie. A few twists that happen along the way. And when you think that everything is squared up, it isn't. Yeah. And it there's just more. Going. There's more to happen. Yeah. The pacing of this movie is a bit different because... Not all killing, all the whole movie. It's more building suspense mm -hmm. and building to something as opposed to littered with bodies everywhere. It's 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 more of a mystery. Yeah, yeah. They solve the pacing problem by the stuff that Nick encounters in the mansion, right? Yeah. All the weird dreams and stuff. There aren't too many effects in this movie, but the effects that are there are pretty good. Nick, played by Jack Jones is the only real negative thing I could say about this movie because he's kind of cheap. Yeah, yeah, and, he is. And, like, not that great. He he gets the job done. <laughs> yeah, not in a great way. But, though. you know, they probably could have cast somebody better. I hate his teeth. <laughs> he's like looks like he's wearing silly teeth <laughs> yeah. or something almost. like. Yeah. But besides him, you know, the rest of the casting is good, especially yep. Mr. and Mrs. B. So if you're a fan of, like... 70s slow burn killer mystery type movies. Mm -hmm. It's got some Argento feel, even Argento pacing as yeah, well. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, if you like Deep Red, I think you'd like this movie. It's a perfect movie on a cold winter night, kind of yeah. like Cat in the Canary. Check out The, the Comeback. Comeback.